As you can tell by the way I'm dressed, I'm super excited for summer this year. Hey Forum, Manny back here with another video on the Cascade Sense Fragrance Station and this one is on my top 10 summer fragrances. But as always, before we get on with everything, the goal for this video is 500 likes. If we reach that goal, I'll randomly PM a single subscriber within the comment section below as you'll be the recipient of an assorted niche fragrance sample pack. You can only enter the contest once per YouTube account, so please do not leave more than one comment. And please make sure that your YouTube account is enabled to send and receive messages and that you're subscribed to this channel if you aren't so already. But anyway, summer wise, we have a lot to get through here, so let's get cracking shall we at number 10 here we go it's terre d'hermes eau très fraiche by hermes flankered to the super popular original terre d'hermes eau de toilette the etf version really is what it says it is a way more fresh leaning flanker of the original same type of uplifting citrus opening that's super crowd pleasing and so is its enhanced clean factor overall rather than the earthier soilier initial og terror vibe you do also have a slight tinge of woody slash earthiness there to still remind you that it is a Terre d'Hermes flanker though, but not enough to scare initial tear haters who found the OG too sharp or intense. Just way too safe, way too pleasant, so I like reaching for it for work during the summer. As a result, again, it's my number 10, Terre d'Hermes Eau Très Fresh by Hermes. On to the number 9 summer spot now, here's Bal d'Afrique by Byredo. Bal d'Afrique, or as I jokingly like to call it, Bay d'Afrique, is seemingly a staple on most of my summer related lists, and for good reason. It's safe, it's versatile, and unique in a way that isn't domestic to most mainstream fragrances. Like its lemony opening with that sweet floral marigold is something that I think both females and males can enjoy off of each other because I personally don't think of a gender when I smell this, it just smells super plain, pleasant, and awesome. That being said, if you automatically perceive sweets and or florals to lean stereotypically feminine, you'll likely perceive this that way too, but gents, in case you are, at least you have some clean, earthy, dry down here in that vetiver although really faint. So I do wish that this performed better but I really don't mind respraying this because the opening is just so uplifting. Again gotta love this stuff right here. Bao or sorry Bay Bay Dafrique by Byredo. On to the number 8 summer spot now, here's Zen for Men White Heat Edition by Shiseido. Super pleasant initial blast of that Hosku orange note here, kind of like a Yuzu if you're familiar with the Invictus Aqua or Lodice Pour Homme opening, but overall smells super professional with the mint and other aromatic notes towards the base. But I can't front for them, besides Terra Mess ETF, I equally love this stuff for work and it's a shame that I've yet to use it as much as I would have liked to after last summer last year. So I'm definitely going to get wares out of it now and performance wise it's just passable enough for me that's modest enough for the workplace. So I like that, that's why it's my number 8 summer fragrance, again Zen for Men White Heat Edition by Shiseido. Now moving on to my number 7 summer fragrance, here we go, Aventus by Creed. So Aventus like Bao Dafri clocks in super low this list, not because I actually believe that it's the 7th best fragrance on the list, it's it's just that, like Bao Dafrique, I'm not as enthused to wear it this summer because I've reached for it a lot historically. That being said, I still believe it leans summery with its sweet pineapple opening with other fruits that go smokier and dry down gets musky as the time goes on too. Just a super flattering concoction overall that's hard to not reach for when you can't think of anything else to use that day. I personally like using it the most for nights out in the summer because I know I won't feel too cloying as I would a sickly sweet club type of scent for example and this is just right. That now still get noticed in a super positive way, it is Aventus after all. And again, it makes the list this year at number seven. On to my number six for summer now, here we go, it's Curacao Bay by Jacques Fan. Now, Curacao Bay is a scent that note-wise looks unique in contrast to an atypical summer fragrance, but it actually doesn't smell totally unfamiliar. Like right away, you have a sweet, almost candied citrus opening that gives way to a sweet floral, kind of like Bao d'Afrique does, but here it does it with frangipani instead. And if you aren't familiar with the note of frangipani, it kind of goes floral in a creamier, tropical way, almost like it has coconut in it, but doesn't. You also have some watery elements too, but it doesn't lean cologne-like either. It's just a super balanced, super casual, and a high enough quality blended scent that won't break the bank in contrast to some of the other offerings on this list. So check this out if you've yet to. Again, it's Curacao Bay at number 6 by Jacques Fat. Crossing the halfway point into number 5 now, here's Tuca Tatao by House of Matriarch. To me, Tuca Tatao is the tropical and marine elements of Curacao Bay, fused with almost like a Black Orchid EDP by Tom Ford kind of vibe, but better than both those scents respectively in my opinion. Tropical sweets and not so tropical sweets come together for a somehow more tropical getaway experience here. So lots of mango, lots of coconut, but also some tuberose and ylang-ylang too, so it's a varied floral, tropical kind of 
suite that is further more reminiscent of a getaway scent than anything else on this list. So if you're looking for that specifically and have the cash for it, definitely check this out if you've yet to already. Again, it's Tuca Tatao by House Matriarch at number five. Shout out to the big homie Imagine Scent for coming up with this one. Moving on to final four territory now, here we go. It's Lee's Mediterranean, last year's number one, now at number four. Lee's is the kind of marine floral that to me just takes my breath away. Like one whiff of this ginger lily with the sea breeze accord and it's over. Spicy yet floral in a not so traditionally perfumey way and fresh but natural smelling like you can actually picture lilies chilling by the Mediterranean as if there's no other floral to pair with marine notes here this perfectly. It also just evokes super adventurous feels in me as if I automatically want to be on a yacht going X amount of knots just hanging out to this awesome scent. And I can do that for hours too because this stuff is notably a beast off my skin. So if you're into big performance and you want something that's unique, fresh, and floral, definitely check this out if you've yet to. Again, it's Lee's Mediterranean by Frederick Mall. Last year's number one, now at number four. Next up at number three for summer, here we go. It's Fleur de la Lita by Parfums du Cita. Perhaps my favorite scent from this young brand, Fleur de la Lita, is also lily dominant, but you have other light, almost wet florals supporting it too, like magnolia and jasmine and a little bit of rose, which all calm down into a muskiness formed by the ambrette, which is more vegetal in nature and less animalistic, which I prefer for a scent like this because you want the concoction of florals to be center stage here. Now, unlike Lee's Mediterranean, this stuff does lean feminine, so unless you are receptive to florals, gents definitely stay away from this one. But I am super excited to wear this in daytime smart casual occasions, so that's why my favorite and least has been outright here as far as florals on this list. But yeah, definitely love at first sniff for me, part of why it makes the list so high here. Again, it's Fleur de la Lita by Parfums du Cita at number three. Now we're motoring along, and here we go with my number two summer scent this year. It's Wulong Cha by Nishane. Now Nishane actually made a citrusy tea fragrance that performs, and honestly, there's not enough of those in modern day perfumery. So as a tea drinker and lover, salute to Nishane for Wulong Cha here. On top of that, it's super flattering. Like I'd be surprised if this stuff misses the final cut for my annual most complimented fragrances video. Like I'm never just told that my scent smells nice or that I just smell nice. I'm actually asked what it is and who this is by and honestly I wasn't expecting that partially because I wasn't expecting this oolong tea scent to just jump off my skin but I'm glad that it does. So I'll reach for this sharp happy green scent from my most upbeat of casual daytime occasions. That's why it's on this list at number two. Again it's Wulong Cha by Nishane. But now on to my number one summer scent finally. Really can't wait to discuss this one and if you saw my best fragrances of 2017 video you'd have seen this coming already. It's No De Yuzu by Maison Kitsune in collaboration with James Healy. Point blank best Yuzu fragrance I've ever smelled, and I'm not sure if you can give that point much credence because it's an underutilized citrus, but in retrospect, it's easily my favorite personally. A little fizzy, a little sweet, a little sharp, but just right. And then when you put it on top of the Selmarin DNA, like it's just over. And if you don't know what Selmarin scent is like, also from Healy, it's a seaside salty freshy, but devoid of anything that pops like a citrus note, or more specifically here in that yuzu note. So it's almost like Note de Yuzu is a flanker to Selmarin if it wanted to be, but almost not because the main event is definitely the yuzu here. It's definitely the star of the show. Just wish that opening lasted longer and maybe the scent altogether, but when it smells that pleasant and it's that dumb of reach that it's versatile for nearly anything that I have on my plate this summer, I really don't care. That's why it's my number one summer fragrance this year. Again, it's Note de Yuzu by Maison Kitsune in collaboration with James Healy. But anyway, I think that's it for him. Hopefully you enjoyed my top 10 summer fragrances this year. But it's that time of the video where I'd love some of your personal feedback. What do you think of some of these fragrances? Did I miss anything in your personal opinion yourself? Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, just so you know, these aren't my favorite summer fragrances all time. Just what's my favorite currently. So some of my more recent pickups here, I'm just plain more excited to wear, of course, that's all. But yeah, again, if you enjoyed the video or if I put a smile on your face, please like and subscribe if you've yet to. Remember, 500 likes and a random subscriber in the comments gets PM for an assorted niche fragrance sample pack. So please help me help you and until then, salute and thank you for your time as always. Take care for now. Peace out. Bye. Wear your fragrances.